Item number, SCP-900. Object class, Euclid. Disruption class, VLAM. Risk class, Danger. Special Containment Procedures Site-121 has been constructed 10 kilometers from SCP-900 in order to maintain reliable observation at all times. The waters of SCP-900 are off-limits to all unauthorized individuals. Due to the nature of SCP-900, SCP-901 has been allowed free roam on the island, located at the epicenter of SCP-900. Interaction with SCP-901 outside of official interviews are discouraged. No electronic devices are to be brought within SCP-900, except for the sake of testing. Personnel on the island may communicate with Site-121 through the use of a heliograph, a large mirror used for communication by refracting sunlight to a further distance, located on it. Construction or demolition within SCP-900 is not to be attempted under any circumstances. Description SCP-900 is a partially submerged city located within the Pacific Ocean, approximately 300 kilometers east of Helen Reef. The area of SCP-900 is estimated to be roughly 17,000 kilometers squared. SCP-900 is estimated to have been constructed between 1135 and 1285 BCE, and destroyed between 360 and 215 BCE. Surviving architecture within SCP-900 does not match any known civilizations at the time. An island measuring approximately 5 kilometers squared is located at the center of SCP-900. SCP-901, a female humanoid, is the sole resident of SCP-900. SCP-901 speaks exclusively in a previously undiscovered language, which has been referred to by SCP-901 as Burback. Working with the Department of Anomalous Communications and Relations has allowed for conversation between SCP-901 and Site-121, a submerged structure located 125 meters off the shore of SCP-900. Architectural evidence suggests that the structure was constructed roughly 1,500 years after the fall of SCP-900. Any individual who attempts to harm SCP-901 or a structure on this island will suffer immediate cardiac incineration. Salt water will manifest in the lungs of any individual who attempts to create a structure on SCP-900. Reasons for these events are currently unknown. The boundaries of SCP-900 are marked by a disruption of electronic equipment, including but not limited to loss of function, shutdown, distortion, or amplification of display or audio devices, etc. Occasionally, the distortion of electronic devices will produce an image, word, or sentence. See Addendum 1 for more details. The frequency of such disruptions increases the closer said equipment is brought to the center of SCP-900. All electronic objects brought onto the island will cease functionality. Analysis of the equipment after failure has found evidence of salt water spontaneously appearing within the circuitry. Addendum 1 A partial list of recordings created through the anomalous effects on electronics can be found below. A full list is available upon request from the SCP-900 research head. What appears to be music played by a drum with a person singing. Invader. Distorted. Flee. Run. Retreat. Murderer. A crowd of people talking. No individual words can be made out. Do not discuss or interfere with the traitor. Heavily distorted as if underwater. Not yours. Untranslatable. Refers to a concept inherent in the religion of SCP-900 as the Noctumkin, or a person's ascendance to the realm of Mothoroi, the Sun God, after death, drowning, death, why, gather, keep, protect, army, or kingdom, blasphemy. Addendum 2. Forward. The following transcript details a video report made by Agent Tenor of MTF Gamma 87 
analog freaks. Of note, this report details the first expedition onto the island with an SCP-900, and the first known contact with SCP-901. Agent Tenor sits facing the camera in a metal chair in front of a gray wall. His eyes are visibly straining to stay open. Agent Tenor, yesterday, I got back from what was supposed to be a quick, simple exploration of SCP-900. Since we couldn't carry recording equipment in, someone had to make a log. Agent Tenor closes his eyes for a few seconds, then shakes and lifts his head up. Agent Tenor, we were told that all we had to do was land, set up our heliograph, take note of anything interesting, and come back. No danger, nothing to hurt us. They just needed us to set up some equipment and give the all clear. Agent Tenor chuckles quietly and sighs. Agent Tenor, four-man team, two casualties. Agent Tenor stops to take a deep breath. Agent Tenor, it started off well. Like we expected, things stopped working the closer we got, and we lost radio contact by the time we had reached the island. All fine there. We touched land, got out, and started doing our jobs. Agent Briggs and Agent Penny would set up the heliograph. Agent Saxony and I would take a look around. We got about 30 meters from the others before we heard a scream. There was... Agent Tenor is silent for a moment. He scratches his forehead. Agent Tenor. Penny was lying on the ground, flailing. Briggs thought he was choking, so she gave him the Heimlich maneuver. Water shot out of his mouth, with a bit of blood in it. It didn't seem to help. Penny fell unconscious. Briggs and I tried to give him CPR while Saxony picked up the mirror and signaled an SOS. That's when she came. Agent Tenor furrows his brow and moves in his seat. Agent Tenor, a woman, human by the looks of her. She was walking down the hill towards us, saying something in a language I didn't recognize. She started to point at us and screamed some things, and that's when Saxony broke. Agent Tenor visibly shivers. Agent Tenor, we didn't know what was going on. I think Saxony just panicked, judged her a potential threat, and ran to tackle her. He never reached his target. Halfway there, Saxony just collapsed and grabbed his chest. Screamed so loud you must have heard it on your boats here. Then he was silent. Brown marks started appearing on his body, where his veins were, but he wouldn't move. Agent Tenor closes his eyes and shakes his head. Agent Tenor. We kept trying to keep Penny alive, but it was no use. Whenever we tried to get him to breathe, he'd spurt out bloody water. After a couple of minutes, we turned over to look at Saxony and saw his skin had charred. Autopsy said he burnt from the inside, all while that woman watched. Agent Tenor opens his eyes and stares directly into the camera. Agent Tenor. She watched us while we got onto the boats and kept staring at us as we sailed back to base. I don't know who she is, but I don't trust her, and neither should any of you. This island, this city isn't safe for us. We weren't meant to be here. After this log, I'm going to make sure we never come back. Afterward, Agent Tenor would later submit a request to cancel all future expeditions into SCP-900. After 24 hours of deliberation, this request was denied. Addendum 3 On 3-17-2008, SCP-901 was interviewed on its involvement within SCP-900 and its role within its society. A transcript of this interview, penned in Burback and later translated by researcher Darnley, has been included below. Dr. Kip Hello. You have chosen to speak with us. SCP-901. It is necessary. You were not frightened away when you came. May I ask your name or title? Dr. Kip. Doctor or priest, Catherine. Of the Kip family. Scholar of the horizon or unknown. What is your name or title? SCP-901. I have no name or title left. Dr. Kip. Did you have one once? SCP-901 Yes, Doctor or Priest Kartika, Servant of the Mothroi. Note Due to Mothroi also being the literal word for the sun, 
It will be referred to as The Sun for the rest of the document. Dr. Kip, what made you lose it? SCP-901. I defied the untranslatable. Dr. Kip, what is that? SCP-901. The untranslatable. Dr. Kip, yes, we're not familiar with that word. SCP-901 closes its eyes, remaining silent for several seconds. SCP-901. It is the ascent to the realm of the sun. A journey or purpose. Dr. Kip. Understood. You have a great reverence for the sun. SCP-901 stands up, angry. SCP-901. Of course. Dr. Kip. What role did the sun play in your society? SCP-901. I, my people, were not born here. In the time of night, we found ourselves brutalized by horrible animals or spirits. Some fled, following the path of Loutcom to the east. We found this sacred place. The sun guided us to build this city, and the sea protected us from the animals or spirits. Note, similar to Mothroy, Loutcom represented the sea in the culture of SCP-900. The two deities were both revered by different religious groups, with Loutcom's followers mainly living near the then beaches of SCP-900. For the sake of simplicity, referred to as the sea for the rest of this document, SCP-901 sits in silence. Dr. Kip, what were these animals or spirits? SCP-901, children of darkness, like yourselves, but wilder. Dr. Kip, who has told you this? SCP-901, those that came before you. Dr. Kip, do you know the names or titles of these people? SCP-901, no, all I know is their fate. Dr. Kip, and what was this fate? SCP-901, drowning or death. Dr. Kip, is there anything else you can tell me about them? SCP-901, I can tell you what I told them. Leave this place now. Closing statement. Following their final statement, SCP-901 refused to continue speaking with Dr. Kip, forcing the interview to terminate. Addendum 4. On 4.05.2008, SCP-901 was interviewed within Site-78 by the research head, Dr. Catherine Kipp. SCP-901 was questioned about SCP-900. The following is a list of questions asked by Dr. Kipp and their answers, written by SCP-901. Translations and annotations were written by researcher Darnley. Dr. Kip, why are you choosing to speak to us now? You refused to last time. SCP-901, I hoped you would leave. Dr. Kip, why do you want us to leave? SCP-901, this land is cursed, drowned. You are in danger here. Dr. Kip, what danger? SCP-901 remains silent, its eyes closed. Dr. Kip, what's wrong? SCP-901, I am reliving a memory. May I tell you a story or lesson? Dr. Kip, yes. SCP-901, several comets or eons ago, there was a people. They had suffered once under cruel masters and fled to the sea. After a long voyage, they found an island. This island was chosen by the sun and sea, untouched by others, and gave the people a new home. The sun built the people a beautiful city and fields to grow their crops. The sea gave fish and protected the people from others. It was a glorious time. SCP-901 The people gave back to their gods the best they could. The sun was given a temple atop the highest mountain and the people listened to its teachings. The sea was given the dead, as thanks for its protection. For a long time, this was satisfactory. But slowly, the sea became jealous of its twin. 
The sea was supposed to have the drowned or dead, but the souls of people would still climb towards the sun. It saw this as an injustice and began to strike the island in its fury. Some people of the city sided with the sea, many out of fear, and marched up the mountain. The sun struck back, burning those who dared turn on it. SCP-901 One priestess of the sun saw this and wept. She wished for peace for her people. In prayer, she wept to her master and pleaded to its infinite wisdom that it could find a way to make peace. The sun did not answer her. The sea did. SCP-901 Inspired by the priestess's prayer for peace, the sea claimed the city its twin had built. There was no more to fight over. The sea left only a mountain, and the priestess, who had inspired it. Seizing its followers at the last second, the sun banished the priestess from its realm. The sea provided her kindness, for a time, but refused to take her, lest the war begin anew. She lives on the mountain today, trapped. Dr. Kip, are you the priestess? SCP-901 I am. Dr. Kip, why do you want us to leave? SCP-901 This is a place for those who need it. Many have come before you. None remain. Dr. Kip, and what happened to them? SCP-901 The sun warned them. The sea claimed them. Addendum 5 Incident S-7803 Date 07-25-2008 Location Site 78 Time frame 1003 hours to 1442 hours 1003 hours Site 78 generator failure Backup generator activated 1008 hours Reports of a storm visible from Site 78 Notably, no such storm was observable on satellite maps at the time. 1010 hours. Site Director Charles Liddell reported missing. 1012 hours. Site 78 reports being under a heavy storm. 1017 hours. Dr. Catherine Kipp, alongside a small group of researchers and staff, commandeer a vessel to flee into SCP-900 aiming to reach the island. 1019 hours. Acting Site Director Orson Lewis orders an immediate evacuation. 1022 hours. All contact with Site 78 is lost. 1442 hours. Foundation search and rescue forces arrive at Site 78's location. The site is not present. After 48 hours of searching, all personnel stationed within Site-78 are considered lost. Afterward, after Incident S-7803, SCP-901 has refused to speak to Foundation personnel. Out of caution, Site-121 has been constructed as a replacement site, approximately 5 kilometers further away from SCP-900. Addendum 6 Forward after arriving at SCP-900, Foundation Search and Rescue Forces determined that the anomalous effects of SCP-900 had significantly lessened, allowing for the usage of video and audio recording equipment. During this brief window, a video of approximately 50 seconds was recorded on the island, within SCP-900. The equipment used to record this video was failing, with a broken microphone and severe corruption at certain points but the following transcript details what could be salvaged. The camera swings, held in the center of what appears to be a large plaza. A large number of people dressed in simple clothes are gathered, appearing to go about their daily business. No individual takes notice of the camera. A woman with wet hair, later identified as senior researcher Catherine Kipp, walks through the center of this plaza, passing directly next to the camera. Her face expresses confusion. There is a bright light. Three seconds of corruption. A mountain rises above stone houses and buildings, with a brick staircase leading up to it. Dr. Kip, as well as eight other individuals identified as being lost, 
and Incident S-7803 all climb the hill. The camera points towards the sky. There is a bright light. Seven seconds of corruption. There is a temple, similar to Temple S-1 visible within SCP-900. Eleven individuals, dressed in ornate garments, form an organized line. There is a notable gap, the size of a person, within this line. These individuals stop and stare at the camera. They all turn towards the sky. There is a bright light. Ten seconds of corruption. There is a bright light. For approximately one frame, a figure is visible within this light. Corruption. Afterward, no explanation to this footage has been discovered. No corrupted signals have formed a comprehensible message after Incident S-7803. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-899, Lost Children, right now. Or, for the complete course, watch this playlist.